Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going through the Think Back tab on the Thinkorswim platform. If you haven't used the tab before, it allows you to manually backtest your trades and quickly see how they would have played out over time. Now to access the Think Back tab, all you need to do is come on up here to the Analyze page. From there, you're just gonna find it as one of the sub tabs and go ahead and click on it. Once the page opens up, you're gonna see it's broken out into three distinct sections. The first one is the trade screen where we're actually gonna build out our hypothetical trades. The second section down here below, this is where we can actually see the trades that we're analyzing at the moment and delete them if we need to or edit them, whatever we need to do. And finally, the third is just a graph where we can see both the historical price of the stock and quickly see the potential profit and loss of the trades we're analyzing over time. Now, before we actually jump into the tab and how it works, let's talk about some of the downsides of this tab real quick. First off, you're not gonna be able to jump to specific times of the day like you would with On Demand. When you select a date up here in the upper right hand corner, it's gonna be for that closing value of the stock on that particular day. First off, you're not gonna be able to jump to a specific time of the day like you could with On Demand. When you select a date up here in the upper right hand corner, it's gonna be showing you the closing value of the stock and the options for that particular day that we have selected. Now there's nothing stopping you from changing the purchase price of the trade if you know roughly what you would have filled at at the time you would have placed the trade, but I really don't think it's worth the time. The second downside is the fact that you're gonna to have to do all these back tests manually. So basically one at a time. If you want something to automatically backtest a particular strategy, you're really gonna to need to learn how to think script a little bit. There are some basic strategies in here, but if you really wanna use the system to its full extent, it's gonna take a little bit of work on your part. Now, moving away from that, let's go ahead and jump into Think Back and talk about what we actually have to do to use this thing. So first off, to actually pull up a symbol, all we have to do is come up here to the upper left-hand corner and type in the stock that we wanna trade. Now for this example, let's go ahead and throw in Facebook up there. So just type in FB, hit enter on the keyboard. Once loaded, you're gonna see the page loads the stock information at the top as well as the option chain down here below, just like normal. Now to create that hypothetical trade, all you have to do is click on the ask if you wanna buy, click on the bid if you wanna sell. As for the individual stock, all you'd have to do is come up here to the last trader price, go ahead and right click on it, and then say buy or sell depending on what action we wanted to take. Now, once you do click on one of these, let's say we wanted to buy it, you're gonna see that that order ticket automatically pops up down here below in that second section. And this is where we could change the trade price, we could change the price at which we bought it for, and we could change the quantity. And down here below, we can see how that trade would have played out over time. Now, in this case, this isn't very useful because we're saying we're buying it today, October 12th, and Facebook is exactly what we bought it for, so there's been no change. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and exit out of this, and I wanna go back in time. Let's go ahead and pretend today is, let's say January 5th of 2021. So we're gonna go back in time about 10 months. So come on up here to the calendar in the upper right hand corner. From here, we're gonna go ahead and click on this double back arrow and we're gonna go forward to January of 2021. And I believe I said the 5th, which was a Tuesday. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now, once the page loads, you're gonna see the actual prices for Facebook on that particular day, January the 5th. Now the values you see here are the closing values on that day. So on January the 5th, Facebook closed at $270.97 a share. If we come down to the option chain, and these are the options that would have been available on this particular day, on January the 5th. And if we came down to the 15th of January options, which were 10 days out at this time, all of these values we see here, like for these 272 and a half calls, we can see that on January the 5th, these options close at a bid of 550 and ask of 565. Now let's say we wanted to backtest a strategy and anytime that uh, RSI was oversold for Facebook and there was a MACD crossover, we always wanted to buy an at the money option that expired in 30 days. Now to do that, we actually need to be able to see when it was oversold on the RSI or when there was a MACD crossover. So we need to come down to the chart down here below. We're gonna go ahead and right click on the chart and come down to studies and we're gonna go to edit studies. From here, we're gonna go ahead and throw in RSI first. So go ahead and type it up here, RSI, double click on it to add it to the right hand side. Next, we're gonna come up here and add MACD. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there, M-A-C-D. Find it in the list below and double click on it once again to add it to the right hand side. Now you do have the ability to customize these studies if you want to with the little gear icons on the right, just like any other chart, uh, any other study that you've got on Thinkorswim. But in our case, we're gonna go ahead and leave it as the default and come down here and hit okay. Now looking at this chart from January, 2021 and forward, I don't see a time at which it was oversold on the RSI and there was a MACD crossover. So what we're gonna do is maybe go back a little bit further in time. This looks like a potential entry point right here. And that was, actually that was January 15th. So let's say we were to, uh, to j actually fast forward to January 15th in this case. We're gonna go ahead and throw in January 15th up here, go to that particular day. And remember I said in my example, we were going to buy the 30 day out options. So let's go to now 12 February is roughly 30 days out. 
we were going to buy an at the money call. So right here, 252 and a half. We're buying it at roughly 1330. Well, let's see what the mid price would have been on that 1247. And down here below on the chart, we can see a PL graph. That's what that little yellow line is. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it a little bit just to see a, a closer picture of it. What this is going to show us is the most opportune time, the best time that it would have been to close out of this particular position. So you can see here, I bought one of the Facebook 12 February 252 and a half calls on January 15th for $12.47. If we look down here on the chart down below, we can see this yellow line peaks right up here at the top. And if you look right to the right of where my mouse is, you can see that it says my profit on that day would have been $1,982.50 had I actually bought this contract. So looking back in time, the absolute best time to sell this contract had I actually bought it would have been January 26th. Now, had I held through that, you can see it actually dropped off quite a bit. Only a few days later on looks like February the 1st, I would have only been up $70 had I held this contract. And if I continue to hold it all the way through expiration up until the 12th of February, I would have plateaued at $552.50 in profit. But looking at that, that would have been a profitable trade. And, and again, what we were looking for was oversold in the RSI and a MACD crossover. That's what we were looking for to make this entry trade um, backtesting our particular strategy. So let's go ahead and switch this up a little bit. Let's throw in another stock in there. Let's go ahead and use uh, Biogen, B-I-I-B. -I -I -B. So we'll come up here to the top left, type in B-I-I-B, -I -I -B, and we'll get rid of this Facebook trade out of here. Now that we got Biogen pulled up, let's say we wanted to switch this up a little bit. Let's say we wanted to buy an at the money straddle, and we wanted to buy it 28 days out, and see how it would have played out had we actually put on this trade. Now we already have 28 day out options pulled up the 12th of February, so let's go ahead and buy an at the money call and an at the money put. So in this case, we're going to buy the 275 call, and we're going to simultaneously buy the 275 put. Now down below, just like before, we can see the trades right below. We're buying one of the 12 February 275 calls, buying one of the 12 February 275 puts. And if we look down here below in our chart, we can see that PL line. And if we zoom in, let's get a clearer picture of it. We could see that the best time to have closed out of this trade would have been right when we bought it. So right off the bat, this trade immediately went against us. We can see that only 10 days later, it looks like January the 25th, we would have already been down about $1,100 on this trade. And if we continued to hold it all the way until expiration, remember that would have been 12 February, we would have lost $3,642 out of the roughly, it looks like 3890 or so dollars that we could have lost on the trade. So pretty close to max loss. Now what we could also do is build out a short option strategy. Let's say we wanted to sell a put spread against Biogen. We wanted to benefit from that time decay coming out slowly over time. Now in this one, let's say it's again January the 15th since we already got it pulled up here and we're gonna do the 35 day out options 19 February. Let's go ahead and open those up and we're gonna go ahead and sell the 30 Delta options. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to the Greeks. So now I can see the Delta right here in this column. Now finding the 30 Delta looks like that would have been the 255 put. So we'll go ahead and click on the bid of the 255s and we're gonna sell 10 points wide. So we're gonna click on the ask of the 245s. Now, just like always, we've got the trade built out right here below. We're selling one of the 255s, buying one of the 245s. And looking down below at our PL graph, we would have seen that this was the exact opposite. We actually were quite profitable on this trade. Now, right in the beginning, you can see that we were losing, and that's really because of the, the spread on this particular trade. We really wouldn't have traded this if, if this is actually what we would have filled at because the spreads are like three, four dollars wide. But had we held it over time, we can see that that slowly starts to go for us. And eventually, on expiration on, uh, what would this have been, 19 February, we would have been at max profit. We'd be profiting $140 on this particular trade. Now, I think you can see how advantageous this could be. But again, it's, it's a manual testing. You're going to have to go in one at a time and do these each yourself. So if you want to learn to automate it, I will be making a video shortly. It's, it takes a little bit of think scripting, which I absolutely hate. So please watch the video when it does come out. And that'll show you how to automatically do a little bit of this back testing, and it'll even create a report showing you over time had you bought and closed out of these positions when the indicators were met, this is how much you would have made over time. But I think if you're just getting started with this, this is a great way to manually do it yourself, and it probably would be good practice just to learn the strategy you're trying to incorporate. I do hope this video helped, but if I miss anything or if you guys have any additional questions, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll answer them all as best I can. And also list out any video suggestions if there's anything you guys would like me to touch on, whether it be about trading or about thinkorswim in general. But we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. I hope you guys make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.